Years ago, I bought a boat with the intent to become a liveaboard and to fulfill my childhood fantasy of being a swashbuckling pirate. Little did I know of what that would entail. Join me on a grand adventure of preparing the boat and starting the liveaboard lifestyle. And now... What was that sound? Let's see what's going on. Mail. Do what you want cause a pirate is free. You are a pirate. You are a Let's see what we got. This is unboxing the Dread Pirate Mustache Way. CMI Twine. Tar braided number 36. I'll include a link in the Amazon link down below that I got this. I did get it from Prime. What this is is just number thick, number thick, number 36 braided uh, twine. And the reason I bought this small spool was for an experiment. One of the things that I uh, learned about when I was putting up the solar array on the Falcon is that I have the brackets that were uh, done for me by uh, well we'll be on with that in a little bit but I had the brackets for the solar panels to the bimini cover but then uh, everything was kind of wobbly and I wanted supports and everything and I, and I thought about getting more brackets and, and more work and everything. Then I remembered a video I saw about a guy who talked about lashings. That's what this is. This is lashing material. So uh, this stuff is supposed to be the absolute bee's knees. Uh, it'll grip. It'll hold uh, things uh, temporarily out on the boat. I had 550 cord, which I always have ample amounts of. And I used the 550 cord to lash the um, frames to the railings along the side. And it almost instantaneously eliminated all the wobble in it. Because I utilized the old bimini frame, it comes down to a single point of attachment and then kind of wise off and holds the panels. But it's still only attached to the boat at two points, one on each side. I ran... 550 cord uh, between the, the railing on the side of the boat and to those bimini bows and it stopped almost all the side to side movement well then I was going to need a support bar to prevent the backward and forward pivot action and I thought about various things while I was there and I wanted you know my mind of course went bracket 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 uh, but I didn't uh, do anything while I was there. And then I remembered the lashing, which means I could basically take an aluminum pole about this long. This is PVC pipe. I'm not using this. I, I, this is just for uh, experimentation purposes. Uh, but uh, a pole like this lashed to the back would uh, completely support the weight and make make it so I wouldn't have to take the panels down all the time like when I leave the boat for a week or two to come back um, the, they would and what this does is it lashes between the lashes the pipes together uh, people anybody familiar with uh, seeing teepees and things like that those those poles are lashed together the benefit about lashings are if it breaks I have more wherever I am 
You can literally use almost anything for lashing. 550 cord makes a, a good lashing in a pinch. It's very, very strong and uh, it's highly durable. The problem is, is that it tends to be a little bit slippery, especially, uh, well, on PVC pipe, it is, uh, it's like ice. Uh, but this stuff on an aluminum pole is supposed to grip like there's no end all be all. So I'm going to cut to a, I'm going to open this up. I'm going to pull a small section off, and I'm going to cut to, I'm going to attempt to film the way that I'm going to lash these bars together and lash the entire bimini structure together. The two bars in the back that will support the forward back motion, the, uh, I'll probably leave the 550 cord on the sides, but then I wanted to lash another support bar between the two bows so that the frame, the solar panels themselves are not providing the only rigidity that the, uh, that the uh, frame kind of supports itself. And basically all the supports for the Bimini cover are going to be lashed instead of uh, brackets and bindings and things that can go bad. Uh, this stuff is supposed to be the end-all be-all of weather resistance and rot resistance. And people have talked about they've strapped things up for two years and the wood's gone back and everything was perfectly fine. Um, and who cares if I have to replace it after a, a year or two? This stuff is UV resistant. Uh, but more importantly, I can take everything down, even in a hurry, because even in an emergency, this tool will allow me to almost instantaneously take the the cup, the bows, everything down in a matter of minutes. And in a storm situation, that can mean significant things. Yes, I would have to relash everything together afterwards, but that's a lot better than trying to fight with a screwdriver undoing brackets in the middle of a windstorm that just hit you. So, um, plus it's kind of cool and kind of piratey, and that's what I go for. So, I'm going to cut to the, uh, the lashing section, and uh, we'll see how that goes. All right, guys, so I've got a little table set up here, and I, I'm going to attempt to show you some things, but I can't, I don't have a fancy overhead rig and, and stuff like that, so I will uh, just tell you the names of what I'm using. I learned how to tie these kinds of things uh, watching YouTube videos and stuff, so I can show you what I'm, what I'm planning on doing, and I'll tell you what I'm using and try to show it. Uh, but it's kind of difficult the, the way I, I don't have all the fancy. I'm not a YouTuber. So, anyway, this is what I was talking about. This is what I'm using. It's 100% nylon tar braided line, size 36. Uh, it's about, I bought a quarter pound roll. cost me like 10 bucks and was prime. So this is something that I ordered on like Saturday and I got it. Uh, on the Monday so uh, but a quarter pound of this stuff is 138 feet so that is more than enough for me to think about buying uh, a pound roll of this stuff <laughs> which is more than you'll ever use in a lifetime is, is only like 50 bucks but look at this stuff so it took me forever to find the end of it here but look at that it is sticking straight out. Let me see if I can, yeah, it is sticking straight out. This stuff is amazing. It's a little bit thicker than I was thinking of and they make a, I think size 18 was the other size recommended but I went with the 36 and if this stuff works any way like it's about to show me that it's willing to work I'm probably going to buy a massive spool of both of this. So, that, that is amazing. It is literally sticking straight out of just gravity-defying stuff. It does have a slight chemical odor, I'm told. But, so, and I'll just let it sit there. It's actually, 
sticking straight off the spool over its own label. So, uh, now PVC pipe is not recommended for doing this kind of work uh, because of its super slick surface and paracord or 550 cord is not recommended uh, for use in this. You can and it, it works better if you have like sticks and you can carve grooves into the stick to help the paracord but the paracord is considered too slippery because of its nylon exterior surface hence the tar coating on this braided line. I went braided for a couple different reasons here. Um, they make braided and twisted uh, and they're almost the exact same price so it depends on what you want to use it for. The braided line when you cut it does not unravel itself. It's, it's, it's literally three strands of this stuff braided together and then dipped or coated in tar and this company seems to be the one everybody talks about. So I went with this. The twisted is exactly that. It's just three lines twisted together um, and they unspool very easily, uh, which is fun great in a lot of circumstances. People use this for fishing. Uh, in fact, it's even labeled on here, fishing, boating, home shop, building trades, and gardening. Gardeners use this stuff to lash the lattices together for climbing plants. Fishermen use this for drag lines and, and things like that. I, it, this stuff supposedly is the Swiss Army knife of twine and is incredibly strong. I, I, something like 300 pounds. Uh, where paracord or 550 cord has 550. And a couple of the things that I did when I was researching this is that I found that the three strands that this were made of, traditional paracord or 550 cord has seven lines inside of it in this nylon sheath. There are seven twisted together. That's where the strength comes from. This stuff is apparently supposed to be three of those lines just braided together. So it's almost the, the exact same stuff. So depending on what you want to use it for, I chose the braided line because of the fray, and I'm only using it for lashings. So when I cut it off this stuff, I don't want it fraying. And that's the thing. That's the end right there. It's not knotted or anything. It's just ended. So... What I'm planning on doing here is I have a couple different uh, options available to me, but what I've settled on doing is when you lash, you got to start off with a knot holding one of your bars. Uh, some people talk about using a clove hitch and, and stuff like that. I've opted because of the permanency of the structure, I'm going to be using what's called a constrictor knot. And what that is, and this is supposed to be a um, an awesome knot for, um, apparently, some people claim you can tie this knot so tight you can actually use it as a hose clamp. With this stuff, I can believe it, and that makes it even more perfect. So I'm going to tie myself a constrictor knot here. All right. And it's real easy to tie once you learn how. Like basically like any knot. But this is where all that Boy Scout training comes in handy. But there it is. That's a constrictor knot. That's what I'm going to be using as the anchor point. And I pull this tight, and already this is, it's only, the only reason why I'm doing it on this, a lot of people say, don't cinch it down when you're learning how to do it, because usually the only way to get it off is to cut it. But given the slippery nature of the paracord and the extreme slippy nature of the PVC, I can literally slide this off. And even then, it's got a grip on it. So I can see how, especially with something that's tar-coated, this is going to be an extremely permanent solution to that. Once you've done that, it is literally 
like everybody has done before. I mean, you're literally making this as handy in a vampire apocalypse. Because all you're doing at this point is you're weaving a cross. And this is a square... Oh, I'm out of frame. Here we go. Like I said, I'm not real good at this. But this is a square lashing. You just wrap it around here. Uh, minimum three times is what the instructions say. And then you'll do your frapping lashes, which is the wrapping around. So that is one method to do this. And when this is done, this is supposed to be a weight bearing on this. This is real messy. This is not by far perfect because I'm doing it at weird angles and everything, but this that's what it looks like when it's done. Okay. And this is why I wanted to use PVC pipe because it literally just slides off. And another easier way to do it and where you're not worried about a constrictor knot. So that plan was for using a constrictor knot and a square lashing. And that's basically going to be the lashings I'll be using. The other thing is the Japanese lashing. You want to talk about the easiest thing in the world to tie. I kid you not. You literally take your line, you loop it around one pole, right? It's got to be the middle. So make sure that before you do that, you find the middle of the, the rope, right? Just loop it around the pipe. Right. Get your cross piece over it. <laughs> Loop one over, so you'll have one going parallel. You know, one going parallel over, one at a diagonal. And then you kind of do what the square lashing did. Over, under, and around. But you're going to be off even. You're going to have three on this side, two on this side. It's going to be the same. You're going to have four on, the, four on the top, three in the bottom. And then you come back and they split. One goes diagonally, forming that characteristic X in the middle for a Japanese. And the other one's going to go around. And then they start wrapping around. And I don't have enough line on this, but they wrap around and then you simply tie then they, they wrap around like frapping wraps, but one's going one way, the other's, the other's going the other way. See? I'm just kind of holding it here. Uh, and then you tie a square knot at the bottom, and they're done. And this is an extremely strong uh, lashing as well. When you're wrapping these and you're doing the frapping laps, wraps, you want to apply pressure. That's where your torque comes in. So, but that's the, uh, and I'm actually going to cut a piece of this, first of all, to see how well it cuts. That's pretty easy. No fraying. It literally, it's just a flat end. multi-tool. Don't leave home without it. So I got myself maybe a foot just because I want to want to try something here because supposedly this stuff is supposed to it takes knots extraordinarily well. And look at that, I curled it and it's still curled. It's almost like dealing with a wire. It's weird. And I'm tying a constrictor. Oops. Tying a constrictor knot in this. Just because I'm curious as to how well this will go. Oh man, I didn't really give myself a tail on the end of that. 
grab it with this multi-tool. Cinch that down. Oh man, that is gripping the hell out of this PVC pipe. I mean, it's still sliding, don't get me wrong, but that is, and I could probably apply more torque pressure to this, but that is gripping the hell uh, out of this PVC, which is what I was worried about. I'll be using aluminum poles. They're not as slippery as this PVC, but it is pretty slip surface. But this stuff seems to be gripping extraordinary. It, it, it's already gripping better. So, uh, yeah, look at that. It holds, holds the knot. Alright, so there's the knot untied. <laughs> this stuff is just way too cool. So, that's what I bought. Got me some lashing material. Uh, and this will, that'll do it. Hey, thanks for watching. If you want to buy the Pirate of Taco, why don't you think about becoming a patron? See the links below. Don't forget to subscribe. Click the little bell icon when you want to be notified of new content. And as always, may the wind be at your back.